right, swing down, sweet chariot, and let me ride. like the ending before you go to a funeral. And the umbrellas were twirling and the brass band was a plan. Well, we covered them Fibonacci numbers there. Now everybody knows they probably don't work in the stock market. You might think that's the same chord over and over again, but, well, it is. Coming directly to you from the middle of somewhere deep in my cranium. It is an electric universe and transmitting on this spark gap generator. Turning night into day, or day into night, and the rooster crows. Been doing some hard traveling, hard traveling, hard traveling. I promise I'll tell you about the Columbia River Gorge. Well, I remember back in the day, I was traveling around, my pockets were a little low on the jingle jangle there, and boy, uh, Columbia River Gorge, that's a beautiful place. And I found myself high and dry with just a few old pennies left in the pocket there. Some of them corners green pennies, they weren't going to do me no good. I went over to the Union Hall and signed on to work at the bottom, way down deep at the Columbia River Gorge, the dam, they were damming it up. I don't know what they were going to do to the salmon, but anyway, I showed up there and I had my hammer. Oh, I've got a hammer, and I got a square, I got a ruler, and I got a crowbar, and I got a makeshift carpet bag or toolbox, you know, and there I am at the bottom of the dam waiting to get my assignment from the foreman, and the foreman rolls up to me, takes one look at me and my tools, and says, look, son, you come back tomorrow with a full set, and I'll put you on. Well, I didn't have enough jingle jangle for a full kit, so I just moved on, rambling on down the road. I can't tell you how many jobs I've had over my lifetime. I'm always looking for work, looking to get out of work. Pounding the bricks and, well, you know how it is, from Boston to California and San Diego to Mexico, across the border and across the pond, always looking for work. Well, I've worked across the pond there and, I, yeah, what was that thing there? espresso coffee shop there where they served meals and lunch and I remember the day that uh, Bobby's came in and told the owner right in front of me that they had a couple cases of typhoid and then I remember back that the owner had given me holy beekeepers for washing out the espresso cups he said you never wash espresso cups you just rinse them well they had this big restaurant there on King's Road you know and it was way back in the day in the 80s and everybody was punked out, all kinds of piercing and tattoos and all kinds of leather coats with all kinds of doodads and chrome punctured through and well, we were having a great time and then I heard this loud explosion. And then you heard the bobby sound and everybody was rushing over. It was a great explosion had taken place by the king I forget what you call that place. Then I remember back, oh, it was that same trip there, living over there for a while, and I got thrown out of the horse of the House of Lords. The Horse of Lords, I mean. <laughs> I was having a great time because they were roaming back and forth, I guess out to the bar and back. I'm assuming that the House of Lords, they had to have their imbibement or something. And the guy with the big orb, and he looked over at the bobby, and he pointed up to me in the gallery and I go uh oh this ain't gonna be good but I didn't move cause I always like to you know pass through all the towns on the way to nowhere like when I'm going to Coxsackie and 
I might start out in Greenville, and the next thing you know, I'm passing gay head climax and surprise, and then I wind up in Coxsackie. <laughs> Them actual towns on the way there on Route 81 in upstate New York, believe it or not. So up comes a Bobby, and he grabs me and pulls me out and says, what are you, thick as a brick? And then I get back home, and I said to my lover there. My lover, he used to handle all the money and make sure that it didn't get taxed for the queen and the royal family, you know, and he, uh, I probably shouldn't have said that, but anyway, <laughs> I let the cat out of the bag. They're one of the wealthiest families, you know, and they get supported by the state. <laughs> Not so different in any country, but then on the way there he goes, you're wearing a bright green nylon jacket. <laughs> What'd you expect? That was back in the days when they were fighting with Ireland. What were they fighting about? I guess freedom. It's always about fighting about freedom. Well, I got another story for you. I suppose I'll tell you there about immigration and how a bunch of immigrants were saying they were going to take over the basketball court. But I'll tell you that later on. And because for now, I got to wrap this up because I got to toot a little bit on my harmonica. Listening to 91.5, hanging out with the idiot emeritus, the hair man. Oh, what station is this? I don't rightly recollect or remember. How about a little rush? <laughs> 